Hi, this video is about objects and instances. What are they and how can we think of that? So within object-oriented programming, we, uh, we often talk about objects and instances. And often we use the term instances instead of objects. Actually, they are the exact same thing. So let's try looking at Greenfoot first. So in Greenfoot, we have different classes here, like Wilt, JWilt, these are classes, Actor, Dog, these are classes, class, class. So all this, these things are classes, and we can do something we call instantiation to get an instance of a class or an object of a class. So I can do right-click, new potato, click in here, and now I have a potato in here. So we just we don't call this a potato, we just call it an instance of the potato class. We can also call it an object of the potato class. It's the same thing, like potato, potato, right? So uh, now I have one potato, and the nice thing is I can make two potatoes, I can make three potatoes or four potatoes, how, however the amount of potatoes I want to make. So this is one of the big benefits of doing object-oriented programming, like Java is an object-oriented language. So when we use Java, we can create multiple instances of the same class. Before doing object-oriented programming, you kind of had to do this by hand. So if you wanted more potatoes, you needed to kind of handcraft everyone. So let me show you an example. So in the real world sometimes we can make different things. Here we see an example of a mold. So this is a mold for creating dogs. And you can think of these dogs here as the instances and you can think of these this mold here as kind of the class. So uh, we can put something into the mold and it comes out as an instance and this one mold here for this kind of dog we can create multiples, uh, multiple instances of this dog or, dog or multiple dogs from this mold here, like we can create multiple instances from a class. So the class kind of defines, in this case, it defines how what the dog looks like. So this is actually very simple. So this is the same as the potato we have in, in Greenfoot. So we have a definition of the potato. We defined its its image here. We also defined the behavior of um, of the uh, potato in here. So we define everything about the potato, and when we create one, it reacts according to whatever is defined inside of the code. So we can see these potatoes. They're kind of spinning slowly when we run. And uh, these are different from the elephants and the dog here. It, this is called dog, although it's a rhino, I don't know. Or what, what's it called? Hippo. So these are spinning differently than these potatoes. So, and that's because they are instances of different classes. They also look different. So it's the same thing over here. We have our dogs, which are instances of these molds here. Also, you could define Although you have created a class like this, kind of, you can see these are painted. These dogs here are painted with some colors. So probably when they were molded, they would like one color and then afterwards we could set the different colors on them. So this is also the same in, in, in Java. We can, for example, if we look at the dog, we can inspect this element. We can see it has something called health. So right now the health for this dog is, is 60 but you can change these values into something else. So that kind of uh, is equivalent to here where we could create an instance of this dog where we have black eyes and a black nose and then we create another one where it has uh, like blue eyes and, and, a, and a brown nose or whatever we want to do. So the mold kind of defines the basic layout of everything but that doesn't mean we can change small things afterwards. So that's the same thing. And the reason why object-oriented was even invented is that it's just another way of thinking of the world. Because oftentimes 
when we create programs, we want to um, model something from the real world inside our program. So for example, in this case, we are modeling um, potatoes and everything like that. But it could also be another case like the lunar lander game where we simulate like a lunar lander. So in that case, it's the same. We look at everything like we look at it like like objects that are interacting in some way. So this is this is kind of the same kind of the same thing we see. So in the real world, if I want to create multiples here, I need to fill the mold with something and bake it in the oven or whatever you do here or wait for it to dry. Um, but this is the real world. So in the real world, there are finite um, uh, amount of uh, dogs you can make, but on the computer, it's kind of we have unlimited resources almost. So it's more like, and and it's kind of virtual. It's not so when we create something like here, like like an elephant, it doesn't exist in the real world. It's just a representation on the screen. So here we actually get a real object, but here we have an uh, sorry, we have. In here, we just have a representation of an elephant on the screen. So it's kind of more a, a better thing to look at would probably be something like fonts. So this is an example of a, a font. This one is called Good Bees, and we can we can see that we have different letters. It says C S E twenty here. So we can we can change this around. So for example, if I just write a lot of A's. We can actually create a lot of A's. So we can say in this case, we have a class that actually specifies what the A should look like, and we can create multiple instances of A in here. So one thing is the specification. The other thing is is uh, the instance, right? So so one thing is the class. One thing is the instance. And we can also change things with this. So for this font, we can't do a lot. But we can change the size on this one to medium. So we don't need to have like multiple classes, a medium sized A class and a large size. So we can change some things just like we could change the color of the nose on the dogs here. So so fonts is a good example, I think, of something where we can from some kind of template we can we can create multiple instances. So this is a more complex example. Uh, I don't know what this looks like right now, but this is taken from um, something called Sketchfab, which is uh, 3D models that you can use for your game. So someone made this uh, three these uh, 3D models, and you can probably see these are all different. There's a lot of stuff going on, small plates, and there's a lot of uh, stuff here. So this uh, 3D artist here created all of these things, created the textures, they created everything. So we can also look at this as kind of like these are called assets. So we can look at these assets. These are not like finite. We can actually we can create multiples of these. So you can probably imagine this this guy here. You could probably create more of him because you already created him once, so you can kind of copy him. And you could also imagine that you could put some parameters on this guy. So for example, you could change his size, or you could have a parameter for, for where sh he should look with his eyes, or the size of his mouth, or the size of his arms, or uh, how he should turn, uh, which way he should turn. Uh, the length of these things, something like that. You could change a lot of things, maybe colors. You could put a color scheme. All of these things are kind of what we would call something like attributes uh, on the objects themselves or on the class. So, so where we can change different different things. And it, in this case, for all of these, for example, for the dogs, for the fonts, and also for these assets. It's kind of special because they are all static objects. So that means, um, for example, the dog here, once you made it, it can't do anything. You can't do anything with it. It can't bark. It can't do anything. Also, these letters, you can put them somewhere, but they can't do They won't change over time. They won't change if you touch them or something like that. 
and this is where uh, instances are different from from this because one thing is is how they look and this is examples of of looks things that look differently but we can create more of them but in our uh, Java exit world here something like the elephant is actually moving around over time this is more something we would call behavior that they can actually do something they can interact with the world in this case it's the green food world so we can click them we can move them uh, we can make them if they intersect another object they can explode or whatever we want them to do so they're not just like we can't we can create so if I create another elephant you will see that not, it doesn't only create the same looks at, as the other two but it also mimics the same behavior uh, right we can create more elephants and they will all do the same thing they will kind of move forward and turn and move forward and turn so because they are they are an elephant and we specified the elephant class each instance of this elephant will will do the exact same thing also, if we create another dog, it, they will also behave in the, in the same way. We can put them in different places, but they will kind of behave the same way. So when we define uh, something like classes and objects, uh, we create objects by right-clicking and saying new. But when we define them, we do th that in a class, and in that class we have some methods. And um, these methods are the ones that define the behavior. And they can also, the behavior can be to change their looks, but basically um, this is behavior changing. And they can change their behavior and interact with other objects and stuff like that. So this is the interesting part. So this is the difference between this kind of real world um, thing where we can kind of because we have a computer, we can copy instances of specific objects. We can kind of create a template for it. Here, these are like, we can, we can make them intelligent or not very intelligent or whatever um, to actually make them uh, move around and things like that. So that was kind of like a, a very ultra brief introduction to objects and classes and instances in in Java because this is a general for for Java in in Greenfoot we can just see it on the screen in Java we can create classes and instances just in memory without actually seeing them on screen as well so that's it for objects and classes